What's up, everyone? So today we're talking to Roach. We've came up with this new kind of podcast, which is going to be labeled Darknet Discussions. Roach is the second person in this podcast who's going to be managing the site and dealing with, with all of that. So, What's up, everybody? Uh, what's up, Roach? How are you doing today? Selling this little human out. Rocha Roach has extensive experience in the dark net, almost arguably more experience than I have. This alt that he's using is not his real alt. We're not going to talk about that, but he's definitely qualified to be on here. He's taught me a lot. So that's it. And he almost this time in the game. So the first thing I wanted to cover, or rather the first thing that we have on itinerary was the ASAP admin coming back. Did you want to kick that off? Well, yeah, homie pop, popped his head out of nowhere, so that's pretty interesting, I think. The site went down, and nine months later, he pops his head back up, so I, I figured that's a perfect place to start off. So I noticed, Andre, the, the message wasn't signed or anything. Do you think that kind of takes away from the credibility, or what, what are your thoughts on it? No, that's the real guy, for sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was he was the, actually one of the mods. I don't think he was the admin of the mods. But. Yeah, I noticed there's a crazy amount of awards on that on that particular thread. Well, uh, I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> dude just came back to say, hey, we ain't coming back. It was like nobody was waiting for you, bro. <laughs> All right, so from what I see, it was, it was posted like 17 hours ago, and, and people like awarded the hell out of it, or maybe that's, like his, his alt awarding himself. I don't know. I was, I just, that was the first thing that caught my mind. When you, and the 44 upvotes at the time I looked at it, I was like, damn, like this thing got upvoted like crazy. And he's like you said, he's basically saying we're not coming back. And it's, like, it's just a crazy amount of upvotes and a crazy amount of awards. And, and, I'm like, what? and somebody robbed us for 4.6. I, I saw that too. They, they, they talk about how they repaid everything, which is crazy. I've never heard of a, a market do that. I mean, it's, it's cool to see some kind of integrity, though. So they say, I mean, there's <laughs> multiple, was it, the suspicions of why they closed. But hey, if they want to say they got robbed for 4.6. Yep. Yep. But it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely, it was definitely interesting seeing the, the reaction of the community. So a lot of people were, were actually happy with the post. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know why for, but I guess it makes news. What did you think of the with the archetype admin in there? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Be- taking bets on when when is he's gonna get busted or 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 how is he gonna <laughs> retire? <laughs> Shout out to Yoshi, the dude, the guy's a really funny guy. <laughs> he's like going around everywhere. He's like, am I gonna get busted or am I gonna exit? Let's put money. Yeah, uh, I mean it's like one of the two, right? I mean, we all, it's not like we see twenty or, or like ten year old markets, right? But ASAP. ASAP wasn't even like, I don't even think it was like, there was nothing really too like jaw dropping about it. They ran it clean and stuff, but I don't know. The market kind of looked like shit to me, but why yep. the, <laughs> I didn't say anything. So what we have, so what we have next, we had the octopus video. Yeah. So tell me about that. How does that come along? Um, so octopus is crazy, right? <laughs> That's a, I think a, a pretty known consensus around the campfire. So when I'd seen that, I was like, wow, like, I wonder, I, I always saw stuff like that. And I would, I would always be like, I wish people from the dark net community could respond on the clear net to some of these people who make videos about dumb stuff like mystery boxes and red rooms and all that. Yeah. There's a ton of propaganda out there. I mean, like, uh, if I was to ask you, like, what some of the stuff that aggravates you that, that you've seen, right? where would some of that be? <laughs> Trying to talk about some, like computer shit that they don't know about, or or, or acting like they've done shit in the gi. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, people trying to gaslight people. It's definitely I can definitely see that being a, a aggravating one. Oh, sorry, I was about to say, do you think he's made any drone drops? I have no clue, or if he's even planning on it. Maybe the thing was just it was just a big put on. It, it could be. I I I, I can see a lot of customers not wanting it. For sure. I mean, obviously, he's trying to do something new and put something out there. But if you got a message saying that, hey, there's a drone coming to your fucking house, drop it <laughs> out drugs, I would be like, yo, cancel that shit. I don't. <laughs> I li- wouldn't want. I it. don't live there. I don't know. <laughs> just and, and like, 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 if I dispute that order, 
how are you proving it? Because like, at least with like USPS, you, you can say, hey, listen, no, your package was delivered at 12.09. They left it on the front porch on Thursday. Right. We, we, I have the tracking number. I mean. Yeah, they could. Or they could just, I know around here in this, in this part, you know, someone just shoot the drone out of the sky and keep on the drugs. But people be plotting. Instead of, instead of a USPS employee, it's, it's, it's people blasting drones <laughs> out of the sky. <laughs> But I mean, it's a, it's a cool idea. It's just maybe it's a little too far ahead. Like maybe in the future, because like uh, unlike the Russian sites and stuff, like they don't do it by mail. Because apparently, like the Russian mail, the shit's like really bad. Yep. So they do the location. Okay. And yep. yeah, then like you'll go to some fucking park, dig underneath some snow, and there's like a brick of fucking coke. Sure. No shit. So it's like the CIA. It's like the. The CIA kind of exchange with like double blind drops or dead drops. Right, right? the dead drops and stuff, which no shit. that wouldn't work over here, but I guess it works over there. But trying to do something different, I mean, you tip your hat to the guy, but I mean, I, I just don't see many people wanting something. Because everybody's paranoid to begin with. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Everyone's super paranoid on edge and shit. <laughs> people use, watch, read posts and stuff about people waiting for their, looking out the window. 10 times a day, you see if the postman's out there. Especially like first time buyer anxiety. <laughs> yeah, first time buyer anxiety and all that. And then, <laughs> and then a drone comes. Like, I can see a bunch of people tripping. I just want to know I, if he's actually done one. It would, yeah, it'd definitely be interesting. To, I'd love to, I'd love to hear his input on that. I was kind of hoping that there would be like a response video on it, but um, like I mean, from the other guy. But I guess the guy sure. put, put his stuff out there, you know? So the, the other thing that we had on this list was Milky. Oh, uh, Monopoly. Like, people who don't know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Melmar de Sinca. So yeah, it was on the ASAP thing. They were talking about, well, one, the, around the back rooms and stuff, everyone's asking, which gang is he going to join? Is he going to go straight AB? Or would they have even allow him? But I think a lot of people just want to know, Like, and you've been in this position, like, he's just got sentenced he's in his first month, and he's at four dicks, or whatever it's called. How is that like? I don't know. Yeah, so four dicks, they have, I think, off the top of my head, they have a low, and they have a minimum security camp. So, with the low, I think they have east side and west side, if I remember right, and they're two, like, different sides. But there's, like, all in all, in the low, there's, like, 25 we don't i think it's five thousand inmates total that you can have like that's their capacity right and as far as i know like fort dix is wild man like i know i had a buddy who who had who had done some time there and like they would have the the chomos like the the pedophiles basically that had been caught that would be bringing like their commissary back and they would get jacked up like they yes. they'd, they'd, they'd get robbed so like a lot of a lot of a lot of them would travel in packs like they'd all go all the chomos would go to commissary and get their shit and then come back. And when they came back, they'd have, they'd be huddled like a group come, all coming back at the same time. And you'd still have dudes that would just run up with like a, a razor and just run it across their commissary bag. Is The commissary bag is like net. Yeah. It's like a, a net cloth. So they just run it across the bag and all their crap would fall out. Right. And dudes would just, <laughs> just start snatching. But Dix is pretty wild. Yes. If you look it up, you'll see like a, a lot of stories of like drone drops. They have a, They'll have like drone drops or they have contraband coming in. Those might be um, Octopus's next customers. It's possible, man. The the camp though, the camp that they have, the minimum security, is a lot different from what I've heard. It's like the the culture is a lot different there, where the cops are gonna be a lot more petty. There's a lot less stuff that's actually allowed. They've there are some federal prison camps that have wire, like they'll have uh, actual wire and they'll have a razor wire at the top like there are also federal prison camps that don't have any of that stuff which like if i'm doing if i'm like if i'm going to do time i would want to be at a federal prison camp with none of the wire because it lets you take off like I, i've 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 taken off like when i get to when i get to a minimum security camp man i was like man i'm out of here like so i would have someone come pick me up once a month i would take off during the weekend I would take off for like eight hours in between counts. I would take off and someone would pick me up on the road and I would go to like a hotel, chill out, smoke cigarettes and 
That's... do a lot of shit, and then come back. And like a buddy of mine would have a cell phone back at the prison camp, and he would call me if there was an emergency count or something, and I'd have to run it's... back and, and climb in and shit through the window. Uh, how, but how does that work? Like shit. you're just like over there by the line, and you just kind of like dodge over one and like into the wood line? Or... <laughs> yeah, so it's like there's they have a perimeter set up, but there's no fence. So like if what you're doing and you've like you've evaluated – how they how they work like because they do drive bys and like staff do drive bys so you have to like time it right but if you have that timing set next to the prison camp where I was at there was private property and there happened to be a graveyard so it was a graveyard for like for service members people who've been in the military okay. so you could take off you could jet through the graveyard and get picked up and then go out and do whatever you wanted to do and then come back and there's all the time, there's dudes that run over to the graveyard at like at nighttime, grab plastic bags full of contraband, whether it's like cigarettes or cell phones weed. or steak and cheese grinders or weed. That's... Yeah, a, a lot of times you see a lot of dudes in the minimum security. They're much more careful about bringing in drugs because those dudes don't want to catch another bid. Right. Like they're on their, they're a lot of them are on the tail end of the bid. Like to, to even be eligible to go to a minimum security prison camp. You have to have like 10 years or less. You can't be an arsonist. You can't be a pedophile. But like those two things are disqualifiers. So if you have 10 years or less and you don't have either one of those charges, you're eligible to go to this federal prison camp. Like you said, a, a lot of them, a good amount of them have no fence whatsoever. But some of them, but like with dicks, they do have a fence. Uh, so it's not like the movie Life where there's like a fucking shoot line if you pass the line. No, they'll, no. Like if you if you try taking off from like a minimum security prison camp, and even if they see you, a lot of the times they're not like they're not going to kill. They're not that BOP cop isn't going to chase you down. Right. They're, they're going to just call an emergency count. And if you don't have shit coordinated with your people, right, you're you're going to miss the count. And then if you go past a certain point in that count, like amount of time that you're missing. They're, they're going to qualify you as an escape versus like a walk away. That's five extra years to escape, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and like, you're never going to go to a minimum security prison camp again. And they can, I mean, they, it's supposed to be a set period of time, but they'll give you whatever they want. And turn around and give you seven years if you made them look bad enough. Well, you know? just to clarify, because I know in like Europe and other, because people all over the world have been probably maybe mm-hmm. listening to this, but like the difference between state and federal in the United States. Yeah, there's a massive difference. So, with with one a really good way I explain it to summarize it is if the state will outsource prisoners that they can't handle to the feds. Right. Like the fed like the feds but the opposite isn't true, right? Like the feds never are like, hey, we can't handle this guy and give it to his state prisons. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you typically have a lot of the most intelligent or the the sh- the movers and shakers that are going to be there in the feds versus the states. But this, it's not universal. Like you, you definitely have insanely dangerous dudes, insanely intelligent dudes too, that, that run shit in state prisons as well. So it's not a, it's not a universal truth. It's like people be like, well, the feds are better. And it's just, it's a crazy statement because it's like saying a brick house is better than one with vinyl siding. Right. It depends on so many things. It depends on how much money was spent to build it. Was the architect good? When was it built? Is it new? Is it old? Like, there's so many variables. You can have a federal prison that is technically better than a state prison, but what's your definition of better? Do you like to mess around? Do you like to have a cell phone? Do you like to smoke weed? Do you like to, like, or or do you just like, I just want to follow the rules? do educational programming because there's some people that do their time that way too. Right. It's like, however you do your time is going to dictate what, how, what you like about a certain institution. So asking is federal or state better or which federal institution is better again, is all dependent on the individual. But even if we took it out of that context and we said, okay, this dude wants to do whatever he wants to do. He doesn't want to be messed with the cops. He wants to have a cell phone. He wants to be able to, smoke a bit of herb whenever he wants if we said that guy even that guy is going to have different opinions on which institution state or federal is better or even if we just look at federal 
some institutions he's going to like better than others. Right. And even that is subject to change because at any point you get a new captain, yeah. you get a new warden, you get a new block cop. Right. <laughs> like, that could drastically change. So when someone's like, this place Box. is awesome, I'm like, well, you could say maybe that's true if you were there in that certain time frame and we maybe we like to do time the same way then you can say that's true but otherwise you really can't apply that across the board all prisons are different they're subject to change very easily just by the introduction of new staff new inmates new policies all of that stuff can drastically change a a yard almost overnight so all that shit they say about like they got tennis courts and fucking golf out there at some of these days bullshit Oh, they do. Yeah. Like you can. And and here's the thing. So check out a federal prison. You can look at it. Look at Google Earth. Right. Zoom in. And what you'll see is none of those tennis courts have nets. You know? <laughs> none of them. So it's just, it's a piece of asphalt that's shaped as a tennis. And like, but like they, they took away they a perks for prisoners bill that got passed. I think the senator's last name began with a Z, but he, he basically disabled the ability for inmates to have like because like they're having like steak dinners like all you can eat buffet style like tennis courts all the stuff that you're talking about like club fed has been something that hasn't existed for a very long time at this point feds is kind of like a really crappy county jail right. where but you have a better classification system so like in a county jail you could have a guy who has no violence on his record he's a first time offender and like they're throwing him in there with a guy who like raped and killed a whole family. Like in feds, if that dude's already sentenced and like he's a like a evaded taxes or something, he's probably going to be in a camp. And if he's in a camp, he's not gonna be around chomos or people yeah. who are convicted of pedophilia, you know what I mean? Or arsonists. He might be around a guy who is violent. Right. Because like you could have a dude who gets thirty years for a really <laughs> violent crime. And he starts off at a United States penitentiary, a high security prison, works his way down to a medium, then gets to a low, then to a minimum. But like that dude is not, it's just because he, he was super violent. Like he's not trying to go back to a high security environment. He worked his way down where, over decades. Where everybody's stabbing you know? each other's shit. Yeah. So he's going to want to stay in that camp. Right. So. Like, it's like, he's going to put him in there. There's a bunch of, he's going to be a bunch of rats that's in there. You're going to have like law enforcement are going to be a there. A bunch of dumb, um, good ass dudes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. A bunch of bullshit um, ass and, dudes. Yeah. And, but the, I mean, the thing about this whole thing too is about prisons. Like a lot of the dudes you're going to meet, even the dudes that are classified as good aren't. Right. Like I've met, I met a ton of solid white guys who didn't rat on their case, who like, like they were seen in prison. They're seen as good dudes. Right. But like there's straight crackheads on the street that would that would rob you, you know, cut you for some shoelaces or like it's and so so good dudes is a very relative term. Right. Um and then you have dudes who are good dudes that they didn't tell on their case, but like they're telling on dudes in the institution. They're they're institutional hot. Right. Institutionalized, so right? Yeah. Up. No, but but well no, no, I mean like like you had dudes that are institutionalized, but you have dudes who didn't tell on their case and like they've been in feds for 15 years and they've just, they've, they've broken them. Cause that's the point of the system. Right. And these dudes are now they're They're just completely shattered. Where like, if a, a CEO comes in, they'll, they're going to go and, and maybe this could be at a low and they're going to go and see them politicking and talking to the cop, like their best friends. Um, and like, they're the dudes that are, writing we're jotting shit down and and throwing it in the mailbox like oh so and so has k2 or like like they're they're telling on dudes right. you know and these dudes so it's it's crazy that's why like in a lot of the higher security facilities like if i'm going to write a, if i'm going to write to staff right right like maybe i want a, a medical appointment i'll write i'll write out to staff like whatever it is and then i'll show it to you i'll be like this is what i'm going to go drop in the box You'll read it and you'll be like, all right, cool. That way, if I drop it in the box and tomorrow someone gets popped and someone tries saying some shit, like, oh, yeah, Sam, we've seen Sam drop a note in the mailbox. And I could be like, yeah, I did. Yeah, and I can ask, you know, here's my homeboy. You know, what did it say? Right. Oh, it was for 
he wanted to go to medical to have a tooth removed or something, right. something like that. You, you have some kind of verification and backup in doing like, doing it like that, you know. But for like for clarification, like if you're hustling on the dark net and you, you're making bread, huh, like and you get pop, you're going to the feds. Like you're not going to do yeah. state. Yeah, the difference between it is with the state. You go to state for violating the laws of the state. With feds, you go to violate for there for violating the, the laws of America. So the two a different lot of the styles. That there, yeah, a lot of the Jews that are there get money, dudes. So they're dudes who made money over state lines or international lines, and that's why they're there. The majority, like you could, you could meet a child molester at a state prison, and then you could meet one in feds. The difference between the two is the guy in feds was distributing it or making money off of it or transmitting it nationally or internationally. Okay. Jeez. Fuck those type of guys. But so for like a Milky's yeah. case or Monopoly in his case, he was he was a Serbian. Like he he and I think they caught him in Austria yes. somewhere. Yep. Like his sight went down and then he was like free for a little bit and then like they they busted him like a couple months later. And then they fucking technically kidnapped Tony and then brought him to the United <laughs> States. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Pablo Escobar was like, is that, that saying on Twitter, fuck around and find out? It's good. Hey, they got sick of it after a while. And that's kind of how it is. Like it's, it's, if you're going to, like, if you're going to do something illegal and like the feds in the U S want you, right. Good luck. It's not going to, it's not, it's not going to be good for you. So they, okay. So like, how would like the con air work? Like, would they like stop in like London or like, I mean, I know they do to like maybe stop in like the army base and like refuel in like Germany and then haul ass over. Or like, how does the international con air? No clue. I've never been on it. Or like regular um, con air. Yeah. So, so a lot of that stuff, like depends on how bad you mess with them. Like if you, if you're, if you're like, if you're writing up, like if, if I'm if I'm like writing up cops, right? Like let's say there's a cop that he he tosses my spot, messes my stuff up uh, stuff up every day, and I start like writing him up. Like maybe I've studied their rules and regulations, and I know them better than him, which is the is true for a lot of a lot of dudes. Yeah. So if I start writing him up saying I don't like what he did, this what he did. This is how he screwed up and, and basically writing the cop up for policy violations. A great example I saw one time was they had a couple of Muslims and these Muslims would go and they would pray. And like they all pray together in, in the rec room. They don't bother anyone. No one messes with them. Like they go off, they do their thing, they do their prayers. But there was like a cop that came in that just didn't like them for whatever reason. Right. So... What happened was he went in, in the middle of them praying, and he was like, get out of here. You can't do this. This is, he was like, I'm classifying it as gang activity because it's more than three people or whatever. And they were like, we're just, we're praying. And he's like, I don't care. Kicked him out. So he kicks him out. Then he starts going in and searching their, searching them. And just all the time. Every time he's on shift, he's hitting them, hitting them on the head. Or he's going and he's searching the dude's cells next to them and saying, I'm I'm searching your cell because of dude. Right. So damn. If, yeah, 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 yeah. So you tell tell homeboy next to you not to have an attitude next time. Right. I'm I'm messing up your stuff because he wanted to talk back. Like punk ass. Like like little stuff like that is is the stuff they do. So they're so what they start doing is like they're like, well, we're gonna we're gonna write this up because you telling us we can't pray together. Like that's how our our religion. That's what we do. We we pray together. Right. So it's a violation of, of our religious freedom. So they they write this up. It takes now when you do this, you file a grievance. The they're gonna file this grievance as a as a BP eight or a BP nine, and they're gonna file it describing what happened, describing how it's wrong. And they're gonna file it, and it's gonna go to like to the to their unit counselor. Then if the counselor doesn't fix it, it goes to the warden. Then if the warden agrees with the counselor. They like they find now each one of these steps is anywhere from a day to a month process. Right. So it goes to the warden. If the warden says no, I don't care, sends it back to the inmate. The inmate appeals it and sends it to the district command. So like the northeast 
would be like all of New England. Right. So they, excuse me, they send it to the, to the, like the regional office or like New England office. Now, if regional says, yeah, we agree with the warden, they send it back again. Then it goes to central office, which is in DC, which controls all of the regions, which can follow the prisons and so on and so forth. Now, if it gets to DC and DC is like, no, then what happens is now you've exhausted, it's called administrative remedies. You've exhausted your administrative remedies. Now, because you've went through every layer of authority in the federal prison system, now you can go and bring this case to court. Okay. But this is mandatory if you want to bring it to court. And we're talking about a six to eight month process for you to even be seen by a judge. Okay. Yeah. So they're doing people dirty. And and you have to factor the whole time this is happening, your cell's getting messed up. They're like, oh, the cops opening up your coffee, dumping it in the toilet, flushing your stamps, like losing your property, like like me- all this other stuff. And they, like, they can mess with you in other ways, it's, too. Stamps like, is money, you know, too, right? Stamps is the little yeah, For sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, I mean, they could absolutely screw with you in other ways. They, they'd spread rumors. Like they could do, they could do, they could do anything. It's, it's their system. So, so now you have like these guys, and this is a true story. These guys go six, eight months. Finally, they get their court date. So when you get a court date in feds, they're not actually paying to bust you to the court. You're going to hop on a phone line and talk to them. And your counselor, like the counselor, the BOP staff member is going to be standing there in front of you, watching you, listening to the whole thing. Right. So they're they checking their ass, they're making sure that they're oh, right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. And it, it's a it's a form of intimidation. They're gonna stand there and like go ahead and say something fucked up about us. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, because because what can happen is like when that call ends, that BOP staff member can be like, Oh, you're you're looking at me in a threatening manner. And it's that's an actual infraction called reckless eyeballing in feds, where they'll go and they'll write you a ticket, and like that can be you going to solitary for that. Or it could be them taking away good time, or it could be them taking away your next visit. There's a million different ways they have to screw with you. So these guys, after six to eight months, finally get the ability to go into court, and the BOP grabs them all up, sends them to solitary, and ships them out to prisons all across the country. Right. So these guys, their court date comes, and they're all in transit which means none of them are actually going to be talking about anything. Right. So they're in transit, but I mean, if they were called to testify, the BOP would have to make them available. But what happens now is the government attorney for the Bureau of Prisons stands up and says, Your Honor, these inmates had a problem with this correctional officer at this prison. These inmates are no longer at this prison. So this entire conversation is moot. Means... Legally, there's no basis for us to even continue any further right. because th- these guys are never going to have this issue again. Fuck off and don't write me again. All right. <laughs> so, like these now, keep in mind, these dudes are put into transport and they're given what's called diesel therapy. So, they're going to be shipped from one prison to another, to another, to another. So, like, if they could put these guys on a plane, like, let's say these guys are in Connecticut and they want to ship them to Cali. They could, one bus ride, have them on a plane, right? And have that plane fly to Cali. But instead, because you wanted to play games with the staff and you wanted to complain, what they're going to do is they're going to put you on bus transfers going from the East Coast to the West Coast, which means you're not going to see your family. You're not going to talk to anyone. You're going to be in solitary between those transports the entire time. You're going to be on the bus with dudes shitting and pissing themselves for the next three months. You chained up. <laughs> it's almost like the Greyhound. Yeah. And that's why they call it diesel therapy. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a way, like, you want to play games? This is how we play games. So, they, like, you have that back and forth. But, like, there are people that come in who, like, they'll come in and they've never done time or they, like, they've done time at different places. And they come in and they're like, oh, like, they can't do that. They can't do this. And it's like, dude, like... Good luck. Why don't you tell them that? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, but then you have you have other spots too where it's the opposite. Right. Where you're gonna have like a cop's gonna come in and he's not just he's not gonna go search a cell because like 
if he goes and he just searches a, a cell, so like he might die. Like, dude's dude's my body. I'm like, you've had inmates in the past who have killed staff for going in and searching their cell. And like, like at the end of the day, you could, you could have a dude that says a bad day. Maybe his mom dies, you know, like, and he just gets to a point where he doesn't care. And he's in a high security facility to begin with. So you have cops in some facilities that just stay in their bubble, stay in their, they call it a bubble. And it's just like a glass and chicken wire metal box kind of that they have that allows them to see out on the unit. But that cop might not actually go out and do rounds throughout the the day because it might be hazardous to his health to do that. So he's like, if I go and search someone's cell, is is it worth dying for? It's like, you'll see staff stand by. Well, you'll have two inmates who get into it and one dude will be stabbing the other dude and the staff will just wait till he's done in some cases because they're like, oh, we're not going to risk our lives for what? This prison? $12, $12 like, an hour? Um, that's That's the kind of world you're in. But at the same time, it's you also depending. It's it's a big topic the the idea of of federal prisons and and whatnot and like with like the the thing that I hear a lot is like well if you are a white collar guy or if you're a, like a dark net market admin or you're a dark net market vendor like what's prison going to be like for you and it's like well it depends on who you are if you're entitled or if you think you're better than people or like if you if you're if you're disrespectful. It's going to suck for you. <laughs> like, so and you're going to learn real quick not to be like that or, or you're going to be in the hospital or there's, there's, a, there's a wide range of possibilities. But a lot of people are going to go in there and there's, there's, there's an expectation for you to be a man. Right. So I had, watched a, I had watched a video one time where Chad Marks, who's a YouTuber, has a channel called Blood on the Razor Wire. TV, which is which is great. I, li- I um, love it. I like watching this stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he interviewed a darknet vendor one time who was about to go into feds, and like this kid was was he was a hardened <laughs> criminal. He had no concept of reality of where he was actually going. And like I remember Chad asking him like, if if you have a dude that comes in when he comes in with a knife or whatever, and he's like give up those shoes or whatever the demand is. Give, give me your shoes or give me whatever. Give me, you're going to buy commissary for me. Like, and, and Chad asked the kid, he's like, yo, what are you going to do? And the kid was like, oh, I guess I'd have to give it to him. Oh, And I was like, oh um, man, <laughs> this, kid, this kid is so done. The- like, but I mean, it was like, it's his first offense. So like, he's going, he's going to a camp. So no one's going to be putting a, a knife to him. Like, like trying to press him like that. Again, because the people at the camp, they're not trying to go to a medium or a low. Like, they're happy at that camp. And they've either worked their way down or they've they've got bad paperwork or whatever. Like, they're snitches or they're ex-police. So, like, they definitely are not trying to go up in severity. Now, there are people who will. There there have been cases in the past where people have gotten stabbed at camps. So, it, it it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's just something that's, that's not really normal. But. My old point is like a lot of the times, and again, it depends on who you meet, depends on who you are, how you are, what your case is, what the atmosphere is on the yard, on the compound that you're in at that time. Like there's a million different variables that go into it. There's no blank slate that you can say it's always going to be like this, but it's good to act like a man. And a lot of times you get treated like a man as long as, again, you have good paperwork. You're not a piece of trash. You're not like if you bump into someone and like you don't bother saying excuse me, that could be a real problem. Right in a in a medium, it could be a it could be a death sentence in a in a pen. So, but for like yeah. okay, so like I just know that the gavel dropped on Monopoly was like maybe a month or something. So he's already in. Like, what's the what's the transfer like? Like, what's how's that going? Like his first month, I've already heard. I've, yeah. Kind of heard that he's already had to run the one. So, but so knows? if you go, so if you, so the first thing that, so you go from a lot of the times dudes that, that are in there for stuff like this, they're going to be self surrenders. So the prison and the, the penal system isn't going to be like, we're not going to spend money 
locking this guy up. We're going to like, you're going to be released. And then we're going to say, hey, on this day, you have to come turn yourself in to this prison. Oh, so, so, so he was out for a little bit. Like they, they took him out here and then they let him go. So that's that's the case with a lot of like white collar criminals with nonviolent criminals. That's the case for a lot of them. If there is like with him because he was brought in, that probably wasn't the case. So he probably went to county or something like that for a little bit until they got him that conviction or he went to like MDC where they like they held him until he was convicted and then they, they, they ship him off. But like for for a lot of like the like the nonviolent or the white collar dudes. You're going to come in from the streets. You're going to self-surrender. When you self-surrender, they're going to give you a TB test. And like it's a little shot they give you. And, and then they wait 72 hours. Uh, but you're going to be held in solitary. So it's a thing they do to, to screw with people's minds. Because you're going from freedom of the streets to maximum security. And it instantly sets a tone of you, you 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 know very very well like you you come in you self surrender you're going to get stripped out you're going to get they're going to send your either send your clothes home or throw them away right that those are your choices so you're going to strip out they're going to do the cavity search you're going to do all the they're going to they're going to scan you with an x-ray machine make sure you don't have anything hidden up your rectum all, all this other stuff that they're going to do you're going to do they're going to they're going to ask you hey listen depending on where you're at well, I think that's a universal thing, but they're going to be like, hey, like, did you, do you, do you have any known enemies? Did you tell on anyone? Like, are you a sex offender? Like, and like with some yards, they're going to be like, hey, listen, like, if you're a sex offender or if you told on someone, you're going to want to tell us because if you go out there and you don't tell us, you could die. Right. So, <laughs> so. It's with other prisons, they're just going to be like, are you a sex offender? And if the dude's like, yeah, they're like, okay, have a nice day. And they, they process them in. But when you come in, you're going to go to solitary. So like you get searched out, all that stuff. Then you go to, then you go to max, you go to solitary, your shoe, and they're going to process you all over again. You're going to strip back out. You're going to get, and like, then they're going to give you your TB test and you're going to get stuck in a cell. And then now with COVID, last time I heard they had a 14 day waiting period. So you're going to go, you're going to be in shoe or solitary for at least 14 days. And then they'll test you if you're, if you're positive, we'll, we'll see you in another 14 days. If you're negative, they'll bring you out, bring you to whatever unit you're going to be in. Then you activate your phone, you activate your email, all, all that kind of stuff. And you're going to meet like the people that you're going to be doing time with. So, I mean, that's how it goes. Usually you're going to go in there like, like you'll go in there and if like, if, if like I'm from mass, I'm a Boston guy and you're from mass or like, you're just a, like a, you're a white dude. Like I'll walk up to you and I'll be like, Hey man, what's up? Yo, where are you from? And you'd be like, oh, I'm from, I don't know. I'm from California. I'd be like, oh, okay, California dudes are over there. And you'll go and you'll meet the, your homeboys and they'll deal with you and they'll, you know, check your paperwork or they'll tell you, Hey, you got so many days to, to get your paperwork so we can see who you are. Um, or like in some cases, they already know who you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> they know what you did and they, they've read all your paperwork because they have PACER too. Right. They have the ability to check your paperwork. So it depends, again, it depends on the yard you're going to, who's on the yard, who who's in charge of your car, whatever, whatever it may be. Is there, is there a, of, a Russian car or like a Serbian car? I don't know. <laughs> I would, so I, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know where that I, dude's going to fall I, in. I was a, yeah, I was I was a I was a Boston guy, so that's really all I cared about. I hung out with the Boston guys. <laughs> like I didn't really care about anyone else. Like hey, if there's another car, like that's that's their car. That's none of my business. Right. And I and I like and I maintain that uh disposition of, of minding my own business. Even in my own car, I mind my own business. Like at the end of the day, you come in by yourself, you're leaving by yourself. There's no your job is is to get through that process with as much dignity and honor as you can. And in my opinion, right. that's, that's how I looked at it. So that's what I did. And at least like everyone does their time differently. Right. When every, every car does, it like, has an expectation of people doing their time in different ways. Like if you're, if you're a Sereno or if you're a AB dude, or you're like, if you're someone in a gang, your the way you do time is going to be exponentially different from the way that I'm going to do it. Right.
I mean, that's the thing. And that's the crazy thing is because you have, you have, you have cars that are geographical based where it's location. And then you have cars that are gang based. And then you have, you have a mix of both. Like, like we had Boston guys who were hell's angels. Um, so in that case, the expectation is always going to be if like a hell's angel one is he hangs out with the Boston guys and another hell's angel is like, Hey, you get to stab that dude. That's also a Boston guy that you hang out with every day. Um, like that's, that's what he's going to have to do. He's, his allegiance is going to be to that gang before it's to that localized. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes uh, that just a poor, poor milky man. Poor milky. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think anyone that that's in the feds who is there for a nonviolent offense where there's no, I mean, if you're like with a dark net market ad and with a dark net market vendor in their PSRs, which is a pre-sentence report, it's a document that outlines your entire life and they use it for sentencing purposes. So in his PSR, if he didn't try to have someone killed or anything to be reminiscent of another dark net market, right. ad, then he's, he has, he's going to have in his PSR, it's going to say victim and it's going to say none. So even the federal government agrees that drug trafficking on the dark net, I'm not talking about in real life, drug trafficking on the dark net is a victimless crime. And that is not something that's my, that's not my opinion. That is what the federal government states in their own documentation when looking at sentencing for individuals. Now, that's what they put in the PSR. When time comes for the sentencing, obviously, the, that's not going to be the belief of the judge or the United States attorney. They're going to be like, you distributed narcotics over a large scale network. Like with me, they were like, you, you sold drugs on a, on a national level and it did, might not have affected the community that you're in, but you poisoned all these other communities by doing this. So you still have victims, but they won't actually list it. It's like them giving, giving, giving Ross life. And they're like, well, look, he tried to have these people hit, but it, like they didn't actually charge him with it. And it's like, well, if you didn't actually charge him with it, how can you sentence him for it? And the answer is because they run the system. It's the same reason why they, they have a 99% conviction rate. Like, it's like, we're going to play chess, but I'm going to tell you that all my pawns are queens. And if you get me in checkmate, I get to reset three times. Uh, like you're never, you're, you're never going to win. Yeah. And, and that's the system that they're in. And this system has been built and orchestrated in a very careful way for over a hundred years to always win. And that's why the stats speak for themselves when you see them. It's also why we have a ridiculous incarceration rate of, we have 25% of the world's prisoners, but 5% of the world's population, right? which is nuts. Like we might talk, talk bad about other countries, like China and Russia, but at the same time, like we incarcerate more of our own citizens than they ever have in, in the history of the world. Right. So, I mean, that's, it's really unfortunate and dystopian in my opinion, but that's, that's how it is, but that's, that's what it is. And what's crazy is I would still rather live here than any, any other country because as crazy as it is, we still have, we're still a lot more free. I go to China, I'm a Chinese citizen. I speak out against the government like I do regularly on my YouTube channel. Like I'm not making any more YouTube. It's not- Right, like my social credit score is gone. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard from like some Russian counterparts and stuff that like the prisons yeah. out there are fucking brutal too. In yeah, Ru- in Russia. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The only one, the only one I saw featured was was I think it was called Black Dolphin. Oh yeah, that's when everybody um, sees. Yeah, where they fucking yeah. march them around like almost sucking their cocks and shit. Like, like had a <laughs> hand on their back and like that's just gotta suck, man. Dogs screaming at them. Yeah, and what's sure. and- what's cold up in. It's cold. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, hey, so, so, I mean, that was enlightening. So, I, I, yeah, I think the next, the next topic that we had was Cypher closing with exit scans. Cypher admins, a bunch of busters. And I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and say it, man. Like, Cypher and Rootless and Coldless, they're all the same guy. I, I'm yep. telling you, because I used to, the, their market was so bad when they first came out. And I wouldn't submit bug bounties. Like, not even that long ago, I was able to like 
what was it like mimic the going around as an admin or finding a, a popular vendor and then making an account with under their name and just like I made a whole you know showed them and everything and the dude was just like I was I was just going around impersonating you know, as an admin he's like oh yeah here's three hundred bucks I was like I don't want I was like, I don't want it and you keep your three hundred bucks you little pro boy but yeah the I mean I say with Cypher, hey, good riddance. Like, it was an S, what is it? The Ekmar market? It was like a heavily added uh, version. Script. Yep. He, he yep. needed it a bunch of times. Like, that yep. thing was trash. So, good riddance. But uh, they weren't long. They were around for a while. Just in the yeah, shadows. It was funny seeing, yeah, it was funny seeing Codeless come back on Dread. And he was like, He's like, we say, he's like, he's like, oh, well, I don't know what's going on, but it's, it's definitely not Ellie. It's definitely not an exit scam. And I was like, dude, if, if you just said you don't know what's going on, how can you say it's definitely not any? It's because it's the like, same guy. It's the guy that's running it. <laughs> See, that theory, that makes sense. Yeah. That I could get behind. Well, yep. I know. I used to hit him on the message mods and I'll talk about one subject and they yep. could carry the conversation on, but. It hit me up with a different name. I was like, whatever, man. But yep. yeah, they they went down good riddance, but they were around <laughs> for a long time. And then the, I remember when I did that, when I turned in those bugs, the guy said like, man, I've never even had like $5,000 in the central wallet. I was like, man, what have you been doing? What have you been doing, man? Like you've been around for like four or five years. Why aren't you popping? You got to do something. Yeah, good riddance. I did catch him on that Cypher Market Canary Bounty a bunch. So they really stopped paying it because I was like, I would wait. I would set little timers. You didn't know, like, oh, check hey. Cypher's Canary. And then I'd go up there and blast it on Dread. Like, where's my 500 bucks? I'm, I'm happy to see them go. Yeah. Yeah. So the next thing we had in line was Archetype hitting 400 and 420,000 users. And you, you did a really good in death video on them. And yep. uh, yeah, I, I, I still have a bunch of markets that I, that I want to do. It's just like that, like that style of editing, man, it takes like that mark, that, that video was three weeks of editing. It was brutal. Yeah. brutal. You were telling me, you, you know? were telling me, was it like for every, was it hour? It's like for every five minutes, it's like two hours of editing or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's, so it's like for five minutes of heavy editing and like, I'm not an expert, which is probably why, but for every five minutes of video. On that video, it was 10 hours of actual time that it took to edit five minutes of a video, right. which was just like, it was nuts. I mean, I think when it's all said and done, I don't think they're going to, well, hopefully they don't act, they're not going to exit, I don't think. But it's on how the admin came onto the scene. Oh. All right. So there was this market <clears throat> Pax Romana or some bullshit. There's a guy named Benedict Parisi or some shit. And he had, he was going around DDoSing everybody, every, keeping everybody down, and keeping his little bullshit market up. And the first time I really even known or heard about you, so I, he got into it with him. And then like a couple of days later, you see the post by the, who's now the archetype market admin saying like, I hacked Pax Roma and just dumped a bunch of fucking like, Usernames and passwords, and you see the comments like, "Yeah, that is my password right there." And he would a bunch of people. You see the comments, and then the next day, and this is how you could tell he's a good guy. The next day, he was like, "Dude, if you show me the password, I can go and check how much you add in your wallet, and I'll refund you." And he refund a thing. So, like, that just tells you about this character. Because if it was me, I ain't doing it. Like, I'm gonna keep. It. I'm gonna everybody. I'm gonna keep it, and you never. I'm not even gonna talk about it. But yeah, he did the right thing with that. So I think I think he's gonna go. I think when it all is done, man, like he's gonna end up as one of the tops, like a Mister White, an Alpha Two. Dude has serious game, and the in the market's awesome, better than Cipher. Like if you put Archetype and Cipher together, you can see like quality versus fucking trash. Sure, <laughs> but yeah, so that they hit four hundred k users. So I wonder how long it's gonna be till they hit the half million, or if they've already hit it. Who knows? Yeah, it'll be interesting. And from my understanding, too, they're also implementing, like, forcing uh, PGP or something. Can you tell us about that? Uh, I don't I don't really know too much if they're forcing PGP, because I don't, 
I don't sell or I don't buy anything. Yep. And that's just for real. Like I don't, I don't do drugs, but I don't know. So like when I, when I speak with the guy who's just like on drugs or something, but I do got to say though, that I think that it could like when the end, like when it's end and done, it could be like, it has the potential to be the biggest fucking thing ever. The biggest market ever. I think so. It's just by the way that the guy ran it. That's yeah, going to be crazy. That's, that is a, that's a really big shoes to fill. And the dude, he's smart. He could do it. So, like, I don't know. People got competition, but I think he's going to stay up number one for a long time. Yep. And yeah. dude has serious skills. You know what I mean? So, I think him going around asking people to put bets if he's going to exit scam or this and that, <clears throat> that shit's funny because in his mind, you can already tell him he's not going to do it for the long run. Yep. What was it? I was going to say, though. Shit. But yeah, they're XMR only, too. That's another thing. And then, yeah, the guy's cool. Th- there was a fucking an article. I was looking him up, right? and it was in, like, Germany or something. He has a really Both. cool story. And he, he, like, had a drinking problem or some shit, and then he fucking took acid and stopped drinking. <laughs> he stopped. And they started doing That's martial cool. arts and shit. And I was like, I was telling him, Ben, I'm going to fucking try that. <laughs> and I remember I, was, I told you what I had in Christmas, right? I was like, I don't do drugs, pop. Maybe if I do this, I didn't do acid. I can't trip. But if I was like, yep. man, if I do this mess, maybe I could stop drinking. And I fucking didn't hallucinate it for three fucking days. I thought there was people in my backyard with guns and shit trying to come in my house. So I was like, yeah. that's making me want to drink more, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've heard about like the people using like shrooms to kick like opiates. <laughs> Microdose know? and stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I never heard about using acid. For yeah, a bunch of people say you hit acid and it changed your life. I just, I just can't. Like, I get to see like me eating that shit in the sun. The fucking sun kisses me and blows up, and then I'm just tripping the whole night. <laughs> I am, it's definitely not for me. But yeah, man, it's good to see that they're getting up there. I think. I mean, I think the uh, drug I give them they come in the second. It's the supermarket, but. I think they're gonna keep it number one for a while. Yep. Hey man, hats off to hats off to Yoshi. He's a cool dude. Did you ever get a foot chat with him? He's pretty chill. Yep. Yeah, I made messaged him originally telling him, Hey, listen, man, I'm doing a, a video on your market. And he just wanted back. He's like cool. I think he asked if I have any questions to let him know. So I always I, I like I like that transparency. Like if I'm if it's not something that's time pressing, a lot of times I will try to reach out if I'm talking about someone right. or something that I can have some verification with. Because then at the end of the day, like when you go back, if, if you say something that that was inaccurate, if you actually got it from a legitimate source, you're actually quoting them and it's not just speculation. Some, sometimes, especially in the darkness, you have to speculate. Yeah. But if I can avoid that, I will. But it was cool. What, like she was super, like, no, him and the Monopoly admin and you stuff like they were kind of the same like same thought like like we're gonna do this shit the right way no btc pgb encrypt everything uh for a while i don't like when they first started they wouldn't even sell they wouldn't even sell in the united states and i don't even think they do cards or digital products i think they're just strictly yep. new stuff but like yeah so watching them evolve and stuff has been pretty trippy and <clears throat> i don't know Hopefully, hopefully, everybody can cash in on the not exit or not bust because I'll tease that people cash in on those bets. Yep. So on on the site, the Darknet Discussions site, I say a BTC operator pleads guilty to money laundering. Do you want to get into that? Yeah. yeah. Do you don't remember? Uh, were you around when BTC it was like Alpha Bay Silk Road days? Like between that yeah. era, did you ever yep. did you ever see it? No. No. I. I I, I'm not a fan of exchanges. Well, this is, was like after Mt. Gox and shit. And like, there wasn't really uh, that. MOT, yeah, MT Gox, yeah. I heard of them. There yeah. wasn't too many exchanges <laughs> out. But the cool thing yep. with them is if you can get an okay pay card, which is like only, they, they can't, you, you can't get them in the United States, but if you go out of the United States, get one, or you have like some family members or something, CG1 that's activated, then you could put your money on there and then go straight to the card up to like 10 grand and just go straight to the. So it was like, 
before the BTC ATMs, before all that. So this is like back how people used to wash their bread, like when it fir- everything first started kicking off. Yep. And they got him, what was it? In, the, they got him in Greece for Cyprus. And the dude was trying to get extradition back to Russia. And they, they didn't let him go. They didn't let them motherfuckers go at all. So they kept him there. And then, like, I guess that's, I didn't know that he got fucking shipped over here. Yep. So he shipped. So there's, like, if you think about it, man, there's all kinds of people in the fucking, in the prisons that's all dark that, up and stuff like you got Ross Penis Smith from Alpha Bay he got 20 years you got this guy you got this free evil we'll talk about that later but it's just like I guess as it's growing you can kind of see like you know all these people catching all these crazy go- and the thing is is like I don't know I'm not saying what, what did they give them what was it like I know Monopoly got 13 years Yep. I mean, would you you weigh everything out and stuff? Like, if you think about it, man, people people get more time and stuff for guns and like having to switch on the gun and stuff. You'll get like sure fifteen to sixteen twenty years, but if you run a dark thing and you, they gave him thirteen, but you think you think he told? You think? Listen, I always said that when Monopoly got busted, he was going to tell on everybody. Because he'd always bring out these <laughs> fucking folders tell, and then show you that all the stuff, all the conversations he had with you. So there's yeah. tons of conversations and shit. And they probably got all that shit. And I don't know. I don't know how I got back on the him. But yeah, man. It sucks, man. Because BTC was awesome. And I'm still in my feels because when they shut it down, I had, I had a bunch of money. So I, I took a loss on that back in the day. Yeah. That um, I I, I don't I, I tried to stay away from exchanges. I think when I would swap uh, crypto, it would be like with way back in the day. No, after this was Changely. Oh, Changely. He's yeah, he's Changely a lot. But like, because it was another one that I was looking at, and I remember going in and I tried to read the TNC of all. Of them. And when I looked at the other one, they were talking about like open cooperation. With the DOJ, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm good." <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. And but like, yeah, like they they all they're all going to do that at the end of the day. That's why I think the the decentralized exchanges that we're seeing crop up now, almost kind of like left and right. If you like, I see on my Twitter feed, I see decentralized exchanges all the time, which is a whole other topic. But but I think there's like it's like battling drug trafficking for all those years, then the inception of the dark net markets, and then crypto. It seems like anytime it's like the battle between the locksmith and the thief, where anytime you put so many blocks against a certain thing, that's almost inevitable. There's always going to be a way around it that people are going to come up with and almost invent it, you right. know, the, this, this loop around to search for that freedom of like, no, like you're not going to stop me from you know, doing, doing what I want. But, but yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. The one thing I will say is like the comparison between the amount of dark net criminals in a institution versus regular criminals is incredibly disproportionate. I would say like, I could tell you for a fact that like, for me, it's like maybe, maybe one to a thousand. So like, you have, let's say, a thousand guys in an institution, just because it's a round number, a thousand guys in an institution. At, when I last looked up the BOP statistic, they said around 70 to 75% of people that were incarcerated were there for narcotics. So 750 of those dudes are, in some way, shape, or form, there for drugs, whether it's using, selling, distributing, whatever. One of them would be a dark net guy. Right. So the implementation of encryption and the use of Tor or ITP or whatever it is you're using is a, I think it's a massive differential in terms of likelihood of being caught. Right. And that's not even like the, the ultimate OPSEC because you definitely, I mean, I've, I've read about vendors who have gotten heroin vendors who have gotten life and like they were ordering buckets of fentanyl directly to their house and sending 
from their house and using the return address of their actual apartment. Like, like, <laughs> busters. So, yeah. So, so I didn't, now you got life. So how's that? So it's like, it's like, but my point is like, as, as dumb as you can be on the dark net, it's almost crazy because even a dummy on the dark net is going to be almost a thousand fold more safe than the most careful person in, in real life. I mean, just from seeing from an incarcerated person's standpoint, seeing the amount of drug offenders that are in there versus the, that of that that were using the dark net versus the ones that were using the dark net. Yeah, I just kind of miss the old days where you would like sell a DB through a fucking e gold exchange and box of money to show up to your drop. That was the that was the, that was the days. But you know that evolution, like that those evolutionary periods where crazy things happen and then you have the counters of law enforcement or whatever coming in and switching things up it's like now i think i see a lot more i I think the first xmr market only that i ever saw was libertas and someone told me there was a libertas 2 that came out i was it was cool um that was it was that the fucking i don't know that admin that used to talk to like aliens there's a really fucking trippy admin i think so he was like itp only it was like it was like green, green and black libertas. Yeah, dude, that's the, that's the fucking yeah. guy that used to like talk to the fucking aliens and shit. <laughs> that dude was fucking on one for sure, <laughs> for sure. But it, but his sight was fucking tight. Like his his sight was perfect. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it's definitely interesting though to see that progression of where people almost think like. Like nostalgic ideas of like Bitcoin and how it's safe. Oh, it's safe. It's secure. And then like they start to realize as we go further on down the line, now that we have like AI looking into BTC transactions and being able to find almost networks of money laundering using AI and blockchain analysis right. versus like switching it up and using some like XMR. I'm, I'm like thinking about the old days of shit one time. I was like walking to the train or something and there was like this abandoned house and stuff. So I would get my drops and stuff. I didn't walk up by and all these fucking cop cars all around and shit. And it's all oh, fucked or raiding and fucking drop. <laughs> like chicken in an empty house and shit. Like that was like when I was like 16, you know what I mean? But like Where? back then it felt like a little easy. Now people like, I don't know why anybody would use Bitcoin anyways nowadays, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like it's worthless. Like all the, everything, the, the fuzz and the dazzle and shit, it's trash, man. Now it's just like corporate yep. America money. And I'm like, I'm all over it. Yeah. It's kind of like seeing the progression of the cannabis industry, turning it from like the local small guy grower who grows in his basement to having it be corporatized by these massive corporations. And, and now it's like a kind of a soulless industry. You know? But what's crazy is like, I mean, I w- I could still like on the dark net. I could still source better, cheaper cannabis than I can at the dispensary down the street from me. I mean, you can even like nowadays they got the THCA. That is no. All right, so THCA they sell it. This is like the weed you get in like non legal states, but they grow it in such a way where if you light the fucking bud at like 250 some degrees it decarbs and then turns it into thc so like right now you can you can get some i mean but like that's the thing like what's not gonna stop like all these dark bad vendors from selling a bunch of bunk ass thc bud just to like bad reviews bad reviews uh yeah I don't know. Some of that shit gets you hotter. It gives me a headache. I can only smoke that, that fucking shit. But I do, I do like how it has the Texas uh, Attorney General like all up in arms and shit because like they, they there's a loophole and they, they can't fucking fix it. And it's not just like it. All the like around the South and stuff. The all those like you see all the senators and stuff or whatever just tripping over it. You know what I mean? When they found out, like, oh, I just gotta light this shit. 
Or even like those, the vape pens. Like if you hit the vape pen, at some point you're breaking the law, but if you're not hitting the pen, you're not, right? So, yep. all right, well, that was my little rant on that. So I think the the next thing that we had was the Revo affiliate sends. Yep. So some of us had to wait in the long lines and gas for those, because of those dudes. Had to sit in the gas lines for like, because they locked up the the national infrastructure, they locked up the whole pipeline. I think you, yeah, I, I did think that you, when I was locked you know, up. when you were locked up? Yeah. Let me tell you, man, it was you, you ever hear the stories about like the 1970s and stuff when people like ran out of gas? Like there was, you could get gas sure. on Tuesdays. And the lines were so long at the gas stations. It was like, man, what a bunch of assholes. I think it's cool until it has to affect me. <laughs> it's a minor inconvenience. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, fuck these guys. <laughs> but yeah, man, they got 13 years just like Monopoly. And, and yep. they literally locked up the whole entire nation, national grid infrastructure. It locked it up. Yeah. That. The one, one of the crazy things, especially with sentencing that I've seen, like I've seen dudes steal $26 million and get two years. And I've seen people get popped with a half a key and get 15. And it's just that disparity of like, if, if I like if I was to go back and I was to be like, all right, I'm going to be a criminal. What am I going to do? What's crazy is like that that disparity of like this guy, you can go out and make millions of dollars through stealing from a, a credit card company or whatever, or whatever you're going to do. But but like then you have a guy who sells too much cannabis or or sells some coke or something or or like. And we're not talking about like Pablo Escobar. We're talking about maybe a couple thousand and and the exponential amount of time that drugs can get you versus that white collar crime, which is also investigated exponentially less in in comparison to narcotics. So like I, I ah, always point that out to people. I'm like, damn, like nowadays if you want to be a criminal, you're almost better off just doing fraud stuff. Uh, if you're if you're in it to make money, it's really you know? big in the hood nowadays. Like. Back in the day, like it was, and now you see like rap videos and shit. People like on their scam and flex and shit. It's it's wild. But do you think the sentencing sins upon the judge? Because one time, I gave my friend. My friend had a he had a court. He had to go to court, mm-hmm. and his last name was like with a T or something. So they go alphabetically, and I'm like sitting back there, and the judge is like off the bat, off the. Like off the muscle, handing quarters out like twenty five years, twenty five years, yep. ten years. I was like, "Yo, we can get out of here now. Get your warrant. Catch it. Come back when the judge isn't fucked up." You know what I mean? Because yep. that judge right there is gonna hand you some crazy shit. We just might as well catch the warrant. Make the police do their job. Make find you. They'll just come get you at your grandma's house, so everyone knows it. And then you just come back in with a new judge. But is yep. it is it up to the judge? So federally, they have guidelines. You have a United States sentencing guidelines, which is like a it's a tome. It's a massive, massive book. But there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. They do have mandatory minimums for some stuff. And then the other thing is, is like it's not even just the actual crime, right? Like I go, I steal something, I have this thing. There's a million different ways. If the crime for stealing that thing is five years, there's a ton of different ways that they can actually give you 20 because they have these things called upward departures and downward departures. And you have way more upward departures than you have downward departures. So for example, like with my case, selling like drugs and, and stuff, I was like a dark net vendor. One of the, like one of my upward departures for selling drugs was called mass marketing or when you use the internet to aid in drug trafficking. That was like a, a three point upward departure. And then I had another upward departure for being a, a leader or organizer because I was the head of my criminal conspiracy. That's another upward departure. So that an upward departure could be anything from a few extra months to a few extra years in terms of sentencing. So like when I first like when I first got popped, I had, I had 10 counts. So you could have upward departures for each one of those. And um, run a, that could run be a concurrent, or what is it? Not concurrently, but the other one where you have to do every yeah, charge. So you have consecutive. Yeah, you have consecutive and you have concurrent. And like what the feds used to do is like if you got caught with drugs and a gun, they would basically, to sum it up, they would say, okay, 
for the drugs. Here's 10 years. Hold that. But you also had a gun, so we're going to tack on another five or 10 years because of the gun. Right. And they would do what's called stacking. Where they would just keep adding up, adding up like, time. Oh, the, and the gun was stolen, so take a five for that. And then you modified it. Sure. There's another fucking ten. Yep, yep. So, like, you would have all these things that stacked up or added up the sentence. And I think there's a case that came out called Booker, where they actually got it, where they they cut, they stopped doing that. But I don't know if they made it retroactive. So, like, if you're already serving 70 years because you had a a key of coke and a couple guns if that affected the dude in there but i know that there were guys who had stacked charges who later on filed a compassionate release and they said listen like we get the law wasn't made retroactive so it doesn't affect us even though i've been doing say i've been doing 20 years for this 40 year sentence we get that it's retroactive it's not retroactive, so it doesn't actually, it, it does nothing for me. I was already sentenced. Right. But under compassionate release, I can say these are extreme circumstances, and the fact that I have to do another 20 years isn't justified when if a person did the same thing right now, they would only get 20 years. Right. Like that person's already done 20 years, then another 20, and the judge then is enabled to be able to say, Yes, I'm going to resentence you because you filed this compassionate release motion. And it's, it has nothing to, like, they can't, like a judge, a federal judge can't just say, hey, like, I give you, Roach, I'm going to give you 10 years. Boom, you get 10 years. Now you're off of prison. He can't just say, oh, what? I'm going to change that and make it five years. There is, in a lot of cases, there has to be a, reason for him to be able to resentence you and you you're like you give him that ability when you file things like a compassionate release motion. and that's that compassionate release was like only during covid because like from what i hear from like other people it no, was like a, no, a little exi- play he was like during covid it, it was easier so it existed before covid but the ability for you to bring it to a court prior to covid was only if the BOP brought it to court for you. Right. They're never going to do that. They they get $125. Uh, according to the federal registrar, they get $125 per day per inmate. Wow. So, in other words, if you're a correctional officer, whether you're a lieutenant, whether you're a nobody, whether you're the warden, and you work at prison ABC... If you lose 50 inmates, that's a big deal. Like, if if they get taken from you or transferred or released, you're talking 50 inmates, that's $125 a day. What do you lose in a year? And don't you got to pay to be in jail? Like, don't you got to pay? No, no, no. I mean, like, you, you're going to you're gonna have to work. Like, they're going to mandate that you have a job, which is going to pay 12 cents an hour. It's going to pay basically nothing and you're going to be forced to, to be there. But like if you're, so let's say you're, you have a fraud case, right? And you, I had a buddy who got hit with a restitution of 50 something million dollars on a, on a, on a massive credit card fraud case. And the judge didn't like him. So the judge ended up hitting him off with like 25 years. So, so this kid's been down for about 15 years at this point, but he ended up like nonviolent, the skinny scrawny a pencil of a kid to, and they sent him off to like this this brutal medium security prison and and he was transformed relatively quickly from like this paper pushing fraudster to like a stone cold gangster like he's a he's a straight through and through convict at this point but um but but they gave this kid fifty million dollars in restitution so what that means is like the past fifteen years. He makes like 11 or 12 cents an hour at his job that he works at for four to six hours a day. He does, he was doing laundry when I knew him. He's doing laundry and he's getting paid 12 cents an hour. And what's happening is the BOP is taking the lion's share of his 12 cents. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. So what is he left with? Like four? 
Yeah. So, I mean, might as well throw me in the hole at that point. I ain't working. Yeah. And and trying to buy a ramen noodle soup that's say 50 cents. That's a, that's a big expense to a guy like that. And then like, if is if I'm like, okay, well, whatever, like, let's say the guy is family. I'm going to send my cousin in a hundred bucks. Well, they're going to say, oh, well, we're going to garnish 75% of that. So you can have the 25%, but we're going to take 75% 75% of that for your restitution. Now, you can refuse it. You can say, no, you're not taking anything from yeah. it. And what the, what'll happen is they'll put you on restriction. It'll make it so you don't get good time. Like, like they, 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 freeze your, they freeze your commissary. Well, no, not even freezing your commissary. Like You can, you can still get stuff, but you're going to be on restriction. So you're not going to be able to spend as much and you're going to lose like a lot of advantages, like the, the ability to get all of your good time is going to be one of them. And like, if you're doing 25 years, losing your good time, that's a big yeah. deal. Especially because like, you're already in feds, you're already mandated to do 85% of your time. There's no parole. So <laughs> that's not going to happen. So like, when they when I see like a news article and they're like, oh, this, this person got federally sentenced and, and they got sentenced to it without the possibility of parole. I'm like, no one has the possibility of parole. Of parole in the federal you gotta do system. day by day. You gotta do every day of it, huh? Most yeah, of so that. it doesn't matter. I mean, what it is. Now, like since COVID, like to answer your question, yeah, it did get significantly easier to do a compassionate release because now the people who make money off the people who are incarcerated, vis a vis the BOP, and like their jobs are dependent on that, by the way. So if there's a massive reduction in federal prisoners, that's a serious job security issue to a prison guard, right. which means the reverse is also true. If I'm a prison guard and I don't like you, getting your good time stripped from you means you could be here for an additional decade, depending on what your bid is. You could be here for a lot longer, which again, just it's, it's job security for that person. So it's a really backward system. But my, my point is, is like the amount of ways that they can screw you over is pretty much infinite um in this in this particular context so it's uncle sam just sticking his finger up your ass all day <laughs> fuck oh it. yeah 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 for sure yeah and uh, it's just it's 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 craziness but that's what it is and, and again like every prison is different so you might go to one prison and you might be there for 10 years and they might not give a shit they might not garnish anything and then you might go to another one and they might try to take almost everything and and put you in shoe uh, if you don't comply, right? So it can be, it, it can be absolutely insane. To work man. for your fucking three cents, or you go in the shoe. Yeah, and, and like you, you will work, or you will go to shoe, and that's that's kind of the the whole point. Now, if you're like me, and you're like, hey, I don't want to work for this corrupt system, you could be an orderly, and like if you're an orderly, and like your job is to clean the bathrooms, you could just be like, hey, listen, you you talk to someone, you'd be like, hey, listen, I'll give you. So, you know, $10 in commissary or whatever, um, you do my job for me. And you can pay someone to do your job for you. I heard um, that's what Harvey Weinstein stuff and they're doing. He has, he's got everybody like full yeah, of his clothes. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not expensive. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. It, it doesn't take much, man, because like there's not much in that environment. So, I mean, again, it's like 11 cents an hour. So it's like everyone that's there is hustling in some way shape or form like and i don't mean like selling drugs they do that too don't get me wrong but like it could just be haircuts like haircuts and shit haircuts is a dude who makes cards custom cards like like i mean i, I did pop outs and and like all kind of shit man like i mean <laughs> like you there's a there's a million different especially if you're you're in a place where in my opinion compared to a state institution or county jail there was more intelligent people Again, that's subject to the prison you're at, the people you're around. That same thing could be absolutely completely different for another man who is at the same prison in the same unit at the same time. But there's no solidity in that environment. There's, you know, again, you go to a different prison, completely different things. Or you're in a different car, or it's just a different, different staff. Everything can be subject to be changed very, very quickly. Oh, I kind of wonder what are the Monopoly guy is going to do for his hustle. Maybe like magic tricks for soups. We'll pull the I mean, quarter behind know, could the be that. <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, he could go. He could go and he could study law, and that could be his hustle. If he's 
if you're if you're technically adept, right? Like you might learn the coding language of law. Right. And that's a great hustle. Yeah. You know, I know I know guys that write compassionate release motions in there that charge seven hundred and fifty bucks. I'm like a real lawyer. Yeah. Except a real lawyer is going to charge you twenty grand. Yeah. So uh, a paralegal is going to charge you two to five, maybe seven, for a compassionate release motion. A jailhouse lawyer is going to charge you significantly less. I mean, I know guys that would do it for a couple packages of stamps, forty bucks. They write it. Of course, you get what you pay yeah. for. Is that too? You know. But the guy who's gotten twenty people out on a compassionate release yeah. motion, he's probably going to charge a good amount, or he's going to do it for free. I've seen both. Right. Well, that's the thing. I'm looking at a guy that I'm going to try to get on the show, a guy named Daniel Rigmating, who was locked up. He was doing like, uh, he was filing IRS income tax returns in California on dead people. Yep. But they locked him up. And while he was locked up, he was looking at his, all his shit and he found out about the Stingray program. Where they were, they set up the stingray and it's kind of like a man in the middle with the cell phone towers. Yep. Cell towers, yep. And that's yep. how they caught him. And then when he found out and he was pressing it, they just like, yeah, you can just get the fuck up out of here. We'll let you go. Just don't talk right. Don't bring up the stingray yep. shit no more. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm going to see if I can get him on and uh, maybe a couple other people from the, from the old carding day, the Carter's market, shadow market, shadow crew stuff. Yeah, I mean, all those guys are out selling butts, call them fun. Yep, she's like selling butts and like he's like a speaker and stuff. That's cool, you, man. You yeah. got any other projects coming up? Um, so I'm working on a, a couple of different things. I have, I have a new series, which will be, it'll start this Tuesday, but every week I have out, probably out almost a year now. So from this Tuesday onward, Every week, I'll be automatically publishing a very short video, under 60 seconds, of a different onion that exists out okay, there. Okay, that's cool. Uh, a lot, obviously, a lot of them are frauds, right? Like, uh, there's like, so for example, one's like an Amazon card site, and it's just like, pay us 75% whatever you want the Amazon gift card for. And like, I definitely wouldn't be buying an Amazon <laughs> yeah. gift card from this Fuck random no. onion. Hell no. So, but it's like, I look at, I think I did 175 right. so far. So each 175 videos that I'm, I'm planning to have set where they come out, it'll be every Tuesday for at least, at least a year, probably, probably two, three years at this point now with the amount of content that I've made. And then I have another series that I'm creating, which implements different tools. Like one's Blackbird. It's like OSINT tool. A lot of the tools that I'm going to be showing are for OSINT or Darkint, which is Darknet intelligence, open source intelligence gathering for the Darknet, and showcasing ways in which people can use tools, specifically containerized tools. So like the, I think the first one's doing Darknet searches with a clean search engine, meaning it doesn't, it's not going to bring back any CSAM or child abuse or sexually explicit material. So like, if you wanted to search the dark net, you could do that and you can get the description, you can get the onion and you can get the title of the site. So if you want to search for something that's going to be clean, you're not going to be exposed to anything messed up and there's no pictures in the, in the search. So and that's, that's a containerized, that's a, that's a Docker file. So like with that tool, we walk through the setup of it and the execution of it so that someone can see how these OSINT research tools actually work and how they can be applied in a safe way right. for, for use on the, on the dark web. And I, and I did some, it, it's all going to be probably in Linux Mint because I, I love Mint. And I already know there's going to be people like, why isn't it going to be on Unix or Tails? And it's like, because it is possible on Tails. I did some, some research into it. Uh, but it's because like it's, that would be a video all its right. own. And like, as you, like it's going to be, like that's not really the use case for Tails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of false positives. So yeah, so that's that's probably the the one I'm 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 probably most excited about. And then the like the market analysis. I still want to do that. I want to I want to. And what I've been doing is I've been trying to catalog these sites. That way, if they go down, I can still 
do an analysis, even if they're down and out. And then I got some other stuff coming with some interviews. Yeah, that's the way I can't, I can't wait for the interviews. <laughs> huh. The way that you explained it to me, the way that you explained it to me, I think the concept is going to be like, I'm always down with people doing fresh new stuff. So the concept of the way that you're going to do the interviews, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm really amped about that. I think it'll it'll bring to life a lot of characters that are out there that really, even if they're known about, they're not really, they're not really humanized. And I think the way in which these interviews will be conducted will humanize some of these people or some of these, in some cases, some of these legends, because uh, some of these people are, are really interesting individuals. Yeah. Like, but I think the first one I'm, I'm setting up is with Hug Bunter. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about that because I've known, I've known that, I've known him for six seven years now some like yeah. some craziness like that so i mean i knew him back when you could you had the the dark net market section on reddit <laughs> i've been a pain in his ass <laughs> all up until fucking like maybe last year two years ago two years ago i kind of just walked away and started going to school and stuff but uh yeah man hug is a really f- funny and chill dude I, I really like that guy Especially now that especially now that I'm not a pain in his ass and like pressing him every day for something because I'm a pushy, pushy motherfucker sometimes. I mean, <laughs> I, I love freedom of speech. So I love the fact that like the, you had a clear net site that was like, no, your community's not welcome here. And he was like, I know there's like a ton of mixed comments, especially on my channel. You're like a screw dread, dread sucks. And like, that's, that's cool. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But I love the fact that you have someone who a whole community got, got dis- obliterated. They just got like, demolished in in a, overnight with no warning. And there's someone that was like, "Hey, man, screw that! I'm gonna go set something up over here, and and we'll do our own thing." And and yeah, that's exactly him, what happened. So. Him and the Vulcan, I call the Vulcan is Paris, because if you ever talk yeah. to him, you gotta talk to him like you're a Vulcan from Star Trek. It's only logic, no bullshit. Sounds like a developer. Yeah. <laughs> Almost all developers are like the, that I've talked to. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the good old the moderation team, Stinky Beats. Shout out to Shaky Beats and all that. Yep. Solar. I don't even know him really. I don't want to talk to him, but like Shaky and the rest of the talk to him. But yeah, man. All right. Well, this was fucking awesome. I can't wait till next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's gonna be an editing challenge. This this sure. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'll be. It'll be fun though. It'll be. It's. It's new. Yeah. You know what I mean. So. That's uh, that's that's gonna be the thing, yeah, man. So, and in closing, I would definitely say the what's 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 the site that that you have that you talk about you like recent news. Oh, this dark net discussions. I'm just trying to with with dark net live getting sold to Pharaoh, and just poisoning the whole fucking news well. And if we're gonna do something different, man, with this shit, like I'm gonna try to make it more entertaining, not so fucking like. I'm here to make money off the fucking links. And she's like, I'm not even into that. Like, I want to have, like, legitimate coverage of, like, interesting people, interesting things, and, and try different things. Like, you know, we're going to have the videos on there, so people want to watch specific dark type videos or something on the post. And just, like, keep up with the news, but also not, like, do the, this guy got arrested over here, this guy got arrested over here. By the time you're on your sure. fifth story, you're like, fuck, man, this shit's Bumming me the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> this fuck this shit. Like, I'm like, fuck, man. I'm just, everyone's getting arrested out here. But it's, it's crazy too. Cause when you look at it from like a global perspective, when they're, even if they have, they like the, the spec tour where they're grabbing hundreds of people, yeah. even that, it's a, such a small fraction of the actual people. That are actually active right. and engaging in business right. globally, anyway. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna yeah. keep it clear that, like, it's 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 a publication, right? And it's not really, yeah, it's not really meant for. It's really like when you're taking a shit and you gotta you read about the dark net, or you're in your car and you want to listen to something, or you're sitting on your couch, got finished beating off or something, and you like pull up your phone, like, oh, I'll listen to this new story or something. Like something way different, and then like, I feel like I could reach more people on the clarinet than the dark web, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, bring like, and yeah. just keep people informed. Like it's it's not all a bunch of fucking ch- child predators and. Yep. That side is not even the dark net. That's just some old other shit. 
Like that's, I don't ever, I have never, yeah, I have never once accidentally clicked on a fucking CP site or anything. Yep. Like yep. Just, that yep. shit's not the dark, mm-hmm. like this shit over here is what I can set it dark, man. So, uh, so, yeah. And I think, I think that's, that's one of the major misconceptions that they have out yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm, there's going to be no chomo shit. There's going to be, if somebody is, Snitching on some or anything, or even even on the podcast, if somebody's in those stitch, we're not talking. There's just yep. certain ways we're going to go about this, and it's going to be like fun and entertaining, but we're not going to have all the fucking trash and all the no good dudes. Yeah, there's plenty of them out there. So, but yeah, man, everybody stay tuned, and hopefully, my writing gets better. 